Good evening and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Will the All Ordinaries Index make its best run yet during November? Stay tuned as we'll discuss our thoughts on that shortly. We'll also take a look at an RRG of the Australian market and for our main topic in tonight's show, we get into the top 10 lithium and copper stocks to buy. Stock prices to explode. First up, we'll share our hot stock tip for the week. So sit back and relax again tonight is jam packed as we have lots of emails to answer. We'll also take your phone calls and give you the answers to some of the important questions around the market. Tonight, we're excited to share our thoughts on some great stocks like Sandfire Resources, Capricorn Metals, Pilbara Minerals, a relative rotation graph of the Australian market, and more so get comfortable as we'll get into those soon. I'm Dale Gillam and I'm your host for tonight and joining me are two of our team of highly experienced analysts and professional traders Janine Cox and Philip Tordtevsky and together we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Good evening team, how are we today? Wonderful, thank you. And yourself? Me, yeah, I'm fantastic. fantastic with your nice pink and blue tie. I am, but I'm a bit bored. No football anymore. So I'm like, <laughs> what do I'm doing on the weekends? I don't know. You're cricket? I'm adjusting. I'm adjusting. Basketball? No. Okay. <laughs> How are you, Phil? I'm good. I'm good. I'm feeling a little different because we are recording um, mid-afternoon today. So Yes, because both Phil and I are at the Australian MicroCat conference on um, today, which is Tuesday, the day you're seeing this. And on Wednesday, so we're not recording the show live on Tuesday night. We've done a little bit earlier, so you still get everything that we're doing. But tonight, as mentioned, we dissect the volatility and momentum flow of the Australian sectors on the RRG chart because it's week five. But first, let's take a look at this week's hot stock tip. Phil, now what have you got for us? All right. So tonight, the hot stock tip is Insignia Financial Limited, stock ticker code IFL. So let's get straight into it on your screen right now is the marketindex.com. And so Insignia Financial Limited is an Australian wealth manager with over 175 years of experience providing advisors and their clients with platforms, financial advice and asset management products and services. Now, it does have a one year performance of positive 44%, uh, outperforming the sector on a one year basis by 4.8% and also outperforming the ASX 200 by 24%, a market cap of over 2 billion, and a stock that is ranked just outside the top 200. But let's go to the charts right now for the exciting stuff. And you might be looking at this and thinking, Phil, what are you doing here? Picking a stock that's um, at such lows. But what is interesting within Senior Financial, because I mean, you know, when you're looking at stocks like this, long history, had periods of expansion, obviously had a rough period since October 2017, that's been coinciding with the company, you know, losing money. Um, and right now it is still not operating at a profit. But what's quite interesting about what's happened recently, and I'm, I would employ you to go out there and have a look at the earnings call with Insignia because they did change a very specific way they do business. Structurally, they've changed the format of their entire business. And so if we just go back to the chart, you'll see um, the market has taken well to that uh, right now. In fact, you know, we've come off touching the previous all time low in November 2020, what are we here, 23, and you can see the previous all-time low was March 2009. And you know, when you're looking at stocks that, when they do go back to these all-time low levels, generally two, two things are gonna happen. They're either gonna find huge buying mm. um, and start rising on up again, or they're gonna um, dribble around at those lows and really um, end up doing nothing or eventually end up getting delisted, right? So the fact that this one's starting to find buys at this level mm-hmm. combined with the structural changes in the business, obviously there's some bullish momentum for it. And what I really like is the fact that we've bounced quite nicely. I wanna bring up, obviously we've got this momentum line here. We've broken through that. That's the longest term gradient of resistance, which would have kept you out of this stock all the way down. We're on the flip side of that. We've got a nice little period of accumulation and I would say uh, caution to look at this level at $3.74 as potential resistance. If it gets through there, you've got another level at $5.49. But if we go to the weekly chart, because right now it's about following this stock, in my opinion, closely given it's at these lows, if you are looking to trade it, um, especially given the company's still not making profit, but is uh, looking to change things. And I've marked here some projection levels. You can see coming out of that low, each time it's gone higher, we've had four runs up. This first run was 28 odd percent. 
second run was higher than the first, third run's higher than the two previous, and the last run is the highest run we've had uh, to date. So right now we're getting expansions on the way up, which is a very bullish signal. It is a little stretched in the short term right now. So um, I would like to see how it does pull back from these levels. But I mean, with this expansion happening, if you can get a nice little um, setup around these levels, you could be getting in early into one of these players that um, you know could provide that exorbitant potential moving forward if the fundamentals do start to line up with what we're seeing in the technicals here. Mm. I mean, it's six weeks straight up and it is looking stretched, but it just shows you what we talk about, doesn't it? Mm. Like, as stocks have these runs, then you start seeing more players coming yes. into it, especially the retail players on the lower end of the market, which this one is a lot more low end. Mm. There's obviously big institutions are not going to buy this if it's not making money. Mm. So you're seeing the speculators coming in and they've stretched it at the moment. So it looks like, oh, I love it. It looks great. I, I totally agree with you, but it looks like it's probably going to come back before it goes up. Yes. And with a market cap of $2 billion, at some point, mm. if this does get high enough and, and look likely in terms of price, you're going to see that the big end of town potentially start getting involved. Oh, you will. And I think it's got, I mean, I don't you know, fully understand that stock and what it does fundamentally and how it's restructured. It's financial. But... Uh, it was something to do online with the way they um, do their advice. Okay. Very different to the way they've done it in the past. Mm, so obviously that will bring in economies of scale or reduce costs All that. so they can get a profit margin there. So it looks pretty good from my point of view. So that is it for our weekly hot stock tip. Now, shortly we're going to get into our topic for the night. But now, because it's week five in the month, let's get into the RRG chart of the Australian sectors. On your screen right now is an RRG graph of the Australian sectors. Now you can see there, it looks like just a whole lot of um, codes, doesn't it? Okay, which it is. <laughs> and all swirling around a point, which gives you the general idea well. of what, you, what it is you're actually looking for. Um, but on the top section, we can see the ones that are leading. Okay, so we've had information technology up there. We've had um, discu consumer discretionary up there, financials and real estate, all in that top leading area. Now, it doesn't mean that this area, these areas won't continue to flourish. They are more, more likely to do that. But we're now looking for the next best opportunity. So at the bottom here, we've got energy just starting to try to turn up there. We know Santos and Woodside are some of the big candidates there. We've got utilities actually already turning up. And this looks lovely to see that sort of angle moving up out of the RRG graph and heading towards this, um, this line in between the, the uh, lead, lagging and the improving. And then we've got cons um, consumer staples. Now, consumer staples, we know obviously Woolworths is in that mix, which we've been watching actually really closely and looks interesting, may have formed a bottom still has some challenges, but you just need to wait for confirmation on the chart of the individual stock rather than looking at when the RRG graph of the sector says, yep, it's time to go. It means, all right, now let's pick the eyes out of the stocks that are in that space. Now, healthcare has already moved up into that um, improving area, which is interesting. So we've got some really huge opportunities there with the big stocks in the healthcare, but there's also some smaller ones looking really good. Uh, we know that Sonic Healthcare is at a bottom. CSL broke through a trend line on the monthly, but it's actually gone back below it a bit. Still, they could easily turn around and take off and be the next best stocks. Cochlear's bottomed out, but potentially, Resmed's you know, there's so rising. many ResMeds rising. I mean, there's just, you know, healthcare is just flashing as a beacon of potential opportunity there. Um, the telco sector, Phil, looks really good too. It's actually starting to turn around and come back up. Telstra's been falling away a little bit, but you know, after the next low, we could see an opportunity there. It's almost like we're into that sort of secondary phase of this market rush. We've seen some of the major stocks move up in that run, but now we could be in for um, and other areas of the market like materials, which are still not pointing up. You mm. know, that could be one that comes in much later with energy. These other ones might come in earlier and then we see the big players in materials and energy take off. Mm. I mean, this chart really just shows us a whole lot of ideas about where to look to place our money because it shows us where that, where the money ebbs and flows, where it has been going to mm. and where it's about to go to and it shows us more the, the likelihood that then we drill down from that. So for people watching you've never seen us do, you want to use those RRG graphs, they're really a form of how we do some top-down analysis of looking at well, what sectors are likely to move next and then we get into those sectors and then we break it down and that's part of what we do, Phil and I do every single week for our TalkingWealth.com viewers. We open up an RRG of different sectors and look at stocks for opportunities and it's part of the reason why 
you should be subscribing to talkingwealth.com. There's a free seven day trial anytime you want. But right now we're looking at obviously IT slowed down. We're seeing um, some of those couple of other ones in that top section slowing down a bit. So you're looking at materials, energy, healthcare. Energy, healthcare, uh, telcos. Telcos. All of those, yeah, consumer staples. All in that bottom left-hand section. Do you want yeah. to say something, Phil? Oh, look, um, just on that healthcare, because we've spoken about that a little, that I, I am reading reports of healthcare now are getting a lot of seed capital, um, mm. you know, out in the US for all these new um, biochemical, uh, sorry, biochemical, uh, biotech companies. It's called, you know, the health tech space, if you will, mm. where um, that's getting a lot of uh, interest at the moment. And if it's going to be anything like what's happening with the tech sector, then... Be We're watching. going to see a couple of those at the MicroCat conference um, what, or today or tomorrow, basically, where we're showing this show. But anyway, <laughs> Robert, who is asking us about gaps, he writes, what are your thoughts on gaps and how should they be interpreted with regards to technical analysis? Now, I'm going to talk to you, Janine, about gaps because you talk about them a lot. Yeah, I do. Look, it's a small part of the analysis. It's not a major part of what you need to know but it does flag that there is a potential for the gap to be filled. So if a stock gaps down and then later makes a low and then moves back up, there's an opportunity or potential for the stock to move to that level, but it doesn't mean it will. And the thing you have to understand is that if the stock trades on overseas markets, there are gonna be a lot more gaps on the chart and it may not fill all of those gaps at all ever. So that's something Can to I bear in mind. Can I ask you a question then? Is there a, do you have a trading strategy around gaps or you just notice them and you notice what's happened? It's an observation. It's like, a okay, There's a you've got a number of things that you tick off in your analysis and it means that, okay, are there any gaps? Well, maybe that's a, it adds an element of risk so to the equation. So it's not a strategy as such and that's sort no. of what you're saying. How does it relate to technical analysis? And the other thing is mm. understand it's there and why it's happened, I think, mm. is like, well, what happened? Did they do an announcement? Did mm. they do something else? Well, sometimes it's a market-driven one. When, mm. when a market bounces off a low, sometimes you get a whole lot of stocks bouncing off their lows and so you yep. might get a gap across the market. If it's a market-driven one, mm. it might be even less likely for them to come back and fill those. Okay, so in a level of ones, not high importance? It's low. Yep, there mm. you go. There's your answer. Hi team, love the show. Could you please have a look at BHP? I'm currently not in the stock but have been tracking it for many months now. It looks like it started to find some initial support, but I am hesitant. Would like to see another pullback before making a potential entry. Now, I'm going to go to you because you're taking up Janine's seat and she loves BHP. Does she? All right. Well, I'm it's going to channel my stock. inner Janine. But um, look, I love what he's talking about. Mm. He's, he's mentioning that he's, to me, what speaks about that email is patience. Yep. Um, you know, waiting for the stock to turn around and he's mm. still questioning whether there's an entry, which I, I agree with you, mate. So let's go to the chart and have a look for you. But um, right now, yeah, you're right. BHP is falling and we always talk about trading on that confirmation, looking for when or signs that the fall has stopped. So I just want to bring up the monthly chart here for you. And um, it's one thing to identify levels where it may stop falling. It's a, it's a completely other thing to nominate that confirmation. And right now, um, I tend to agree. Uh, initially, what I thought or what was an interesting point was this level through here, uh, the $41 mark, which um, acted as support in the past short-term support, but the stock went and broke through. Now, we are seeing over the last couple of months, obviously, we saw uh, bias come back in since the August 24 low. And this was the period where we had that mini crash, if you will. Mm. But the close was quite nice. Again, we've gone below August low, but we seem to be closing a little bit higher in September. And we are coming into this particular level here at about $38, which has uh, provided some support in the past. So right now, I, I, I like your thinking in terms of putting this stock on your watch. It's one of the biggest stocks. And when the mining sector, if the mining sector has found the low, because it was the strongest performing sector this week, this one will get going. But again, it's all about that confirmation, which I'm not seeing just yet. Yeah, I'm not seeing it much mm, either. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so you got, you've got you got three people saying we're not sort of seeing that support right at the moment, Ben, but keep on looking at BHP because I will give you an opportunity. Vic Ram writes, I've been buying shares on the Indian Nifty 50 for a while and I wanted to start trading in the Australian market. What is the best platform available? Also, what's your predictions regarding Pilbara Minerals on a one-year time frame? In terms of um, a broker or platforms, mm. there, there are quite a few, and it really comes down to what type of um, what you're trying to do with it. Obviously, if you're trading stocks medium to long term, or what kind of exposure you want, because mm. I mean, if you if you want direct share exposure, there, you have to go a certain way. If you're going to try trade 
through a derivative or, or you know get that exposure through the share market, then there are other options. So do you want safety? Um, you know, do you want it to be regulated? There are all these things. I would say start off with the major ones, and then you know go through the internet is a, is a great source to troll through. I'm not going to name names. Obviously, Comsec is the biggest, but I mean just go through the. Yeah, internet. but you got to look at that because I know there are ones that are on your app. There are other ones. That oh are, yeah, you that, know, too. that offer you know commission free brokerage and all that sort of stuff. And to me. And I know Janine and I have been saying this for decades, your money needs to be in the Australian bank account for first. Yeah. So if you're putting it into a bucket account with a broker, then that's risk. And so we don't take that. So to me, you know, I'd go with you. I'd be going with a, a Comsec or a big bank broker mm-hmm. first and for, first and foremost and, like, and sort of avoid some of those ones that are sort of that, that what do you call it, those... Not the GameStop, that was the stock, but, yes. you know, that Robin Hood type stuff. Yes. Uh, they're just... Mm. Well, you, we've yeah. said it, you know, on, on, and we did a show on um, broker accounts, so it's probably a good show to go back and watch. But, you know, mm. when, when the stocks aren't in your name, you know, there are so many issues that can go on there. So yeah. so make sure the stocks are in your name, you've got a chess holding, uh, et cetera, and make sure your money's in a bank account and then pick the best platform for you, depending on what your goal is. Now, my next question comes from Suzanne regarding the short to medium term outlook for A2 Milk. She goes on to say, I purchased the stock at $6.25 in May. With a 20% stop loss, it nearly triggered my stop loss in September, and today I'm down nearly 7% from my buy price. Should I cut my losses now and put my money into another stock, or could it possibly be taking a breather and could recommence the uptrend with the overall bullish market going forward? Now, this has been a stellar Mm. stock since December last year. Really good. Mm. What do you reckon, Janine? I like the stock, so mm. good stock choice. And and looking at the rules, I don't see anything wrong with them. I think you know that there was some resistance overhead, so you'd have to expect that A2 milk was going to pull back because you've got all these peaks here, um, short-term resistance around that $7 mark, which it broke through that after having a bit of a, a push up and since then went sideways before falling out of bed. But the fact that it's actually moved up, um, I'm not concerned about it right now. It's too early days to know whether the stock's going to fall away or not. But the fact that you've got your stop in play, I mean, you know, if, if you've put a stop in place, congratulations to you, why wouldn't you use it? And why why second guess it um, at this point if, you know, you've worked out what you're prepared to risk and now it's about letting the stock unfold? That's my view. Well, to me, you, when you put a stop loss in, you've worked out the stop loss, which mm. means you've got reasoning around why you set it at where you set it mm-hmm. and how you set it. So why would you then weeks or months later going, oh, I don't know whether I should take my stop loss now. The only well, thing that might be mm-hmm. is if it stocks come back, you know, like it has, and we've seen this stock gap down mm-hmm. and then it's had this massive reversal, it may be cause to say, well, okay, maybe I can put my stop up a little bit and the more logical place might be to stick it under that low instead. But that's mm-hmm. a call to make to weigh up the to, decision. To me, if I can just quickly, it, it, it probably speaks a little bit to the psychology of trading because, you know, um, mm. it got so close to your stop initially you know, that would have caused the panic or somewhat to some degree. Now it's moved back to your buy price and you're thinking, you know what, should I just get out and not go through that whole experience again, potentially? Mm. And so I commend you for not letting your stop get hit. You know, that shows mm. the, the growth of a trader, really, to be able to withstand mm. that drawdown. Now that you're back at break even, I would say wipe that from your memory in terms of that experience and let the stock what it was going to do initially because it looks like it's had its mm. pullback. You had your stop potentially mm. in the right place. And it's coming now after a big rise, so stick with it. Let's now switch gears and get into a topic that has vast applications globally and can often provide indication of the health of an economy. What am I referring to? Well, it's copper. One of the world's most in-demand metals and widely used in our homes, businesses, transport, infrastructure, communications. It is everywhere and is ingrained in the fabric of our society. The price of copper can vastly shape the direction of world economies and help indicate the best times to invest when markets are booming. After all, more copper means more production, which means more money flowing through the system, and right now the price of copper is going up. So is this a trend we are likely to see continuing? I'm gonna go to you for this one, Janine. 
Well, yeah, you only have to look at the transition to the green technology to understand how big this is. Mm -hmm. So copper obviously plays a huge part in all of that. So I don't think we're going to see that copper surge go away anytime soon. And if it continues to rise, then companies like BHP, which must know something, I mean, they they made a huge investment into Oz Minerals, so um, they obviously have a good idea for what's coming with copper and are quite bullish on copper right now. Mm, no, look, I think, you know, you can't go anywhere without having copper involved in it, you know. Mm. Mm. It doesn't matter whether it's your computer, your microphone, your kettle. Housing construction. Housing, everything's got copper in it. And mm. to me, that's it's a really good idea for people to be following the copper price. But, yeah, I think the BHP, you know, as you mentioned, has a significant investment in copper of around 30% of their revenue is derived from this metal. So, as Janine said, they ought to know something. Let's take a look at BHP's forecast. Now, copper demand is expected to grow by 70% to more than 50 megatons a year by 2050. High demand should translate to high prices. So does this mean there's an opportunity to invest in copper stock? What do you reckon, Phil? Look, there always is when the underlying instrument is going up. It's always wise to look at stocks, but that comes with a caution because it's not always that stocks do follow the underlying uh, yeah. commodity um, traded. So, you know, you really do need to hone in on the stock. I know, for example, Regis Resources um, yes. is a gold stock and that's been languishing, whereas mm. Newmont is flying. Yeah. And so it's important that you do do your specific uh, stock analysis if you are looking to play the, the sector related uh, companies. But I mean, in terms of investing itself into the underlying commodity, then there's opportunity there right now for sure. Yeah, there's more factors than just the copper price, isn't mm. there? And that's where it's really important to have that right knowledge, especially in these sorts of areas, which can be more vol volatile and they can offer really good growth opportunities. So get the knowledge, I say. All right. Well, over the next decade, BHP expects copper demand to grow by 1 million metric tonnes a year. That's a bit under half of the size of an Olympic size swimming pool. So how high will the price of copper run? Now, I'm going to go back to you again on this one, Janine. Well, um, well copper is, is actually considered um, a safe haven area. Mm -hmm. It's considered a, a dem Well, it's a staple, isn't it, really? You need copper for pretty much everything. So you do. That's right. I mean, if, if you've got copper in your house, you know, and it's being built, you've got copper wires. It's copper in mm. your, um, your, your cooking equipment, for example. Mm. It's absolutely everywhere. So, you know, copper is not going to, ch that's not going to change. We're going to continue to see the demand grow for copper over time. Obviously, with population growth, then it continues. And it's a finite resource. At the end of the day, all of our resources have an end life. They've worked out exactly when we're going to run out of iron ore, when we're going to run out of copper, when we're going to run out of gold. I'm assuming we're going to be dead by then. <laughs> <laughs> of something like that. I don't know. Maybe they'll come up with some copper invention that keeps your, you know. Well, I've seen people with copper bracelets. Copper rings. There are, yeah. uh, 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 mm. Copper what? Rings. Okay. <laughs> copper rings. Yeah. I'm not even going to ask about that one, Phil. I'm going to stay right out of it. Oh. What is it? The copper put, ring to help regulate. You put them on your finger. I don't think I'd want to wear a copper no. ring. I think I'll stick with gold. <laughs> my, my wife's a diamond girl in gold, so I'm, I'm not going to get a copper ring on her. <laughs> Enough about easy. diamonds. Let's go to the copper chart. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, copper futures we've got here on the screen, and you can see how volatile copper can be. If you look at what, the way that the current price action is moving, um, at the moment it's still part of this sideways move. We just managed to get through this high here and only by about 4%. So... Looking at the direction of where copper could head to going forward, I can see it going right up um, sort of about 20% at least um, over the near term. Mm. So that's oh. where we could be seeing copper run to. So can you make 20% out of some good copper stocks? Absolutely. I'm sure we can make a lot more than 20% <laughs> out of some good copper stocks if we get our entry right and we manage our exit properly. Mm. So, And we'll probably have some tips from, on that a little bit later anyway. But while copper is considered a safe long-term investment compared to some other metals such as lithium which is far more volatile the perception by some is that lithium could make more money faster i'm going to go back to you because you're our short-term <laughs> yeah. over there look i'm not so sure about that because um obviously you know we've seen lithium prices falling through Dang. the floor tanking for years mm. and um you know it's funny because i've been hearing anytime you hear about from friends talk about the stock market i i would if i had to guess each time it's somebody asking about what's happening with lithium or buy lithium stocks or do this lithium. And so right now, you know, what's happening in the lithium space is not really translating in the lithium price um, exactly or with the stocks, if you will. So, 
Is there a potential to make money? Sure, if it does start to turn around. I mean, we saw the big play with Rio mm. um, purchasing Arcadium Lithium. So maybe there's a signal in or a catalyst that maybe now's the time to start looking at lithium. Um, but I mean, it's got to start. That, that's a long term play that they've yeah. taken. So for people who are looking to trade more short to medium term, maybe it's a, it's wait and see. But this well, isn't this just sorry. This isn't just a replay of what we've seen many many times in the market. Boom, back in the tech boom bust. It was all these stories about these new age tech companies that were making money, and were, the big headlines were you know the old economies out, banks and all that mm-hmm. are out. The new economies in, and they all tanked, and everybody else is still there booming. And you know it's like well, while everybody's looking the other way, copper stocks are going to do really really well because mm. everybody's looking at lithium, the wrong spot. And, and at the end of the day, lithium it's it's here now. There's a technology for it right now. But mm. what's to say that lithium doesn't get superseded by some other kind of battery or some other oh. kind of technology? It already exactly. is. Well, it already is. <laughs> cool. Well, anyway, the success of electric vehicles, energy storage systems and advancements in battery technology will determine the lithium demand, as, as Phil was saying. So how should we look at lithium and the miners who are heavily invested in this space? I'm going to go back to you again, Phil. Again, it, it's a case-by-case basis. I mean, it's really understanding the stock, going in, digging in, finding out how much they are invested in this space and whether it's paying off, really. Um, and then overriding all of that is looking at the share price. Mm. Um, the share price of the chart will really give you that indication. Is there buying or is there selling? We've seen Santos, um, BHP, Rio. There's no buying at the moment. The moment. <laughs> so you really need to do um, your stock specific analysis and always, always um, stick to that chart because that's going to help you decide whether it's time to buy or not. All right. Now, before we get into the stocks, let's take a look at what Goldman Sachs had to say on the future price of lithium. Now, despite expecting a modest rebound in lithium minerals pricing, Goldman Sachs forecast the current global surplus for lithium minerals will grow from 12% to 19% in 2025 and 2026 and hit a deficit of minus 9% until 2030. So what does this all mean, Janine? Well, what it means is things are going to stay volatile. There's no certainty in here at the moment. And there's a lot of M&A activity going on. So as Phil mentioned before, there are a lot of companies being taken over Mm -hmm. and swallowed up uh, as opportunities. But, you know, where we are in the cycle right now, it has me questioning the decisions that are being made because if we've only got a couple of years left in the boom and then we go into a bust situation... How, where's that going to leave those companies that are heavily investing in this space at the moment? That's what I'm questioning right now. So I, I think that you just have to be very patient and it's a trader's opportunity, not an investor's opportunity in, in this part of the cycle. All righty. Well, let's have a brief look at lithium before we get into the stocks. Do you want to bring up the lithium chart, Phil? Yeah, sure. All right. So we've got lithium on the screen right now. And, uh, you know, as we said, obviously lithium has been in free fall for quite a while. What's quite interesting about it right now is you can see the gradient of fall. It's starting to slow down. And by slowing down, you can see the nature of these bars really tightening up. And this was really pretty much where Rio made the call on Arcadium. So, um, you know, is there potential that we could be bottoming out? Potentially, what's very interesting right now is if we just hover over the weekly chart, look how much more volume's coming into the lithium um but we need to moment. we need to see something change. So we need to see something change in the EV market and for things to pick up for that to happen. Maybe government incentives or something like that that comes in and then all of a sudden you get a rush of people wanting to buy them. Well, that's true. But um, at the end of the day, before that gets confirmed, obviously, um, all we can do is uh, go off what players that are, um, you know, follow the money, if you will. And if huge money is being poured into this space, I doubt it that it's for no reason. Mm, true. Well, you've got to think that, and over the next couple of years, we'll see a lot more M&A activity that we've been expecting and probably be in this sort of space or broadly the alternative energy space. So mm. I'm agreeing with your name. But anyway, okay, it's time we get into some copper and lithium stocks. Now, you want to bring up the first one, Janine? I certainly do. It's exciting, isn't it, to look at some of these commodity stocks. Now, the first one that we've got up here is Sandfire Resources. Now, this is an incredibly volatile stock, a great trading stock, not an investing stock, but you, in you know a few months you can actually make quite a decent return out of it. And quite simply, you'd think, oh, why would I invest on a monthly chart? That's the time frame yeah. I'm looking. But here I've got 77% of gains um, just in a very short space of time, six, seven months. 
is all it took for it to get there. It has a history of doing this every now and again and then doing nothing for ages, but it may have actually changed given it's taken out this all-time high. That was an important point for it. I just, um, if you're not already in it, then you sort of say to yourself, well, okay, well, what's the risk to the downside if I was considering taking it? And I just wait for that next little pullback that looks like it's starting to unfold. Price hasn't really gone on from that big push up. Wait for that to happen and then wait for it to move back up again. I'd just be patient. Mm. All righty. Any next. words from Wise Phil over there? Oh, look, summed up beautifully. I totally agree. Right, well, let's go to the next one. <laughs> right. <laughs> All, right. All right. So next we've got IJ Limited. Now, um, just so you are aware, in the green we've marked with copper. So these are all the copper stocks right now. Next, we're going to get to the lithium, which is in the orange. So um, IJ, different story to Sandfire, obviously, it been falling since October 2022. But where it's falling to right now is really, really interesting to me. And I'll mark that with a horizontal line. You can see agreeance in price, fair value, whatever you want to call it. Price did not move for a very long time around $5 or $4.15. You can see that it hovered through here all the way back since 2009 before breaking off into trend. Now it's come back to these levels. You, you, one argument would be that, hey, it's coming to a level where it could act as the next springboard for the run up. But as always, you want to see that confirmation right now. If you ask me, would I be getting into this stock? The answer is no. Um, you do want to see that confirmation. And um, firstly, you want to see price not only find its feet through here, but start to tick up. So I'd like to see it get up around that. If we go on the weekly chart and, you know, not a wise thing to do, given we are on the monthly falling. But to give you some perspective, you know, you want to see it start to make those higher bases and potentially even get through $8. Be willing to give this stock a little bit more given the fact that um, it has been falling for so long. And then if you want to wait after it breaks through, gives you the confirmation, then try wait for the pullback and see that next move, maybe potentially for the better buying opportunity. But what I'm saying is don't rush an entry through here. All right. I'm agreeing with you because it does look really nice, but not nice enough yet. Yes. Is that the case? It's, it's As they say with the traders, it's always about being patient and waiting for the confirmation. So how about we give them another stock? Yes, I couldn't agree more. All right, CMM, uh, uh, Capricorn Metals may be one that we've talked about on the show before. Some time ago, it actually had a nice break above all of this um, sideways move, tried to get through here. This was going back in, um, if I could just click on that there, April 2024, and then pulled all the way back to test support from that prior low. Took off through it again. It's just really nice in that it's stepping up. So it's actually pulled back to this level again, testing it and then it's taken off again. So I'm actually liking it. The only issue that I see at the moment is that, you know, is it stretched at the moment? You know, is it too far gone to be able to get a trade? And I think if you're a short term, it'd be okay. But um, the more medium term position, I think, you know, it's already gone and until you get a pullback on the monthly chart and then another opportunity. Mm. Mm. What do you reckon, Phil? Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, given it's holding above the, the previous all-time high, that's a nice thing. But right now with the volatility, the extension that's happening, it's really a short to medium term type trader stock and it's at all-time highs. So anytime stocks are at all-time highs, you've got to ask yourself the question, you know, is it you know, overvalued in terms of value, or is there much further to go with this particular stock in terms of value that's going to, you know, send it rushing on through? But in terms of volatility and trend, it's beautiful breaking out, and each time it breaks out higher, it pulls back and breaks a, a further leg higher run. So there's no reason right now to fault that this is this thing isn't just going to keep going into trend. I mean, really, it's running at roughly at 100% a year over the last. Six that's crazy, years, yeah. And that's mm. crazy, and it's like, well, how long can that happen? If mm. we always know that. If something goes up fast, it's generally going to come down fast. So mm. so you're saying it might be getting near the end of its up run? Unless it's backed by, uh, uh, you know, real strong fundamentals, the company's mm. still growing. And obviously right now what's being priced, the, the, there's much higher valuations than the $6 that we're seeing. And that's right. the only thing that would keep buyers interested, I think. Mm. All right, well, let's go and have a look at another one, hey? All right, next we've got 29M, which is 29 Metals. Now, th I'm actually quite interested in this one. It looks like it may have bottomed. So there's a, a retest of the low here in September 2024. In fact, it came back twice. There's two short-term um, troughs in, here, in there. The second one looks like it might be slightly lower. It's come up. We're now seeing a test of that low with this pullback here, but it, the test isn't over yet. Obviously, this resistance, and I'm just going to expand the chart up so you, you can see it clearly, but 
This resistance is quite strong coming in here because it's where it's reversed back from. If it were to get through this level, turn back up and go above the, that outside bar, I think this looks really interesting. Could turn into short to medium term opportunity if that's the case. But one thing to consider is this bar here, the week's not over yet and the selling looks quite strong. Um, so we want to see that really flush out um, and then, as I said, a move back above that line. So Dale, you know, there are lots of opportunities here for short to medium term. This is the sort of gist of this whole copper lithium story. It's not okay. long term at this point. All right. So basically you're saying you know what you need to do. Mm. Don't just get some it. Get some knowledge. Yeah, that's get really important. Get some knowledge. Important. Don't, don't be a guesser or a gambler. Mm -hmm. All right. So another stock? Yeah, sure. So now we're moving into the lithium stocks. And just like we showed uh, previously the lithium chart, you're going to see a lot of these stocks very much to that nature um, in, in freefall, basically, in Liontown Resources. This one here, obviously, you can see on the weekly chart, gap down uh, extensively in October and has not come to fill that gap at all. It's continued on with it. So that is concerning in itself. But, I mean, if we just go big picture on the monthly, obviously, um, you know, very clear example of a stock going through its life cycle. This would have been the period of, uh, you know, early life, um, question marks, the stock's getting better, big accumulation, breaks out into expansion, flips back to the other side and then in contraction. And what we're seeing right now, I mean, very, very clear that expansion. Look how euphoric that kind of move is right there mm. to signal the end. We're falling back down. And what's quite nice about this one, um, although it is very early, is the fact that the falls are getting shorter. We've had this huge fall uh, back from August, September 23 down to February 24. And the next leg down, which is from about May, April uh, 24 down to September 24 is probably half of this um, fall through here. So there is um, a reason to, to start to think, hey, the, the falls are getting less and less, but- well, What's I, that fall as a percentage? Total or? From the top, if we look at the top and we see, okay- It's about stocks, 70, 80. Commodities can end up yeah. Full, yeah, around that 80%, but it could go 90. There's not really a strong level that I can see right there. It's under Janine's magic dollar mark. <laughs> magic dollar, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and, it's and sad, the, isn't it? The key thing with this one is if mm. we just go back to the chart, you can see, just look at the green bars coming through this downtrend, one, 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 one. So we always talk about one month, one week does not make a reversal in a stock, particularly mm. in such free fall. So right now we're one month up, we need to see much more. All right, let's go look at another stock then. All right, something um, hopefully a little bit better than that one is Parenti Global, which actually looks good. We ha we had um, a student a student um, contact us about this. This was actually after the break in the um, Talking Wealth segment, and it looks amazing. It's just continued to run on since last week. It's going up really nicely. It's taken out this high here, but if you look at the setup here, it still would be fine to enter above these highs. There's a potential for it to continue to run well beyond that. So. Um, you know, we were looking at this previously, Phil, and, and the, mm. the resistance, there's short, some short-term resistance across here. I could see that the stock will continue to trend up, make higher lows and higher highs going up to that point. If it gets through that level here, the short-term level at January 2023, but beyond this resistance level, $2, it could even go to $3 over time um, as part of this current boom that we're seeing. Especially the way it's broken out. I mean, if we just apply this um, momentum line through here, you can see Clearly, it's broken through what was the, in recent history, the longest, if I can catch this on the high through there, the longest level of downward momentum. We're on the flip side of that. And again, your famous $1 level, Janine, through here, you can see it's that- back through it. Should if, we celebrate for this? Yes, for but this more importantly than that is, if I can just hover it a bit lower, you can see how significant mm. that 70 odd, uh, 78 cents has been for holding this stock up. Sure, there was a period in 2014, but look how quick it gravitated back towards it. And ever since then, 2014, uh, 77 cents, sorry, has been the springboard for all the moves up. So we've just done that recently. I, I quite like this. Mm, it's mm. nice. It actually looks very, very nice, actually. Yeah. So I think our student did very, very well. So that was last week, was it? Yes. Yeah, yeah we've got some great students, have we? And graduates Don't picking we? some really good stocks. So mm. how about we help them pick another one? All, all right. right. Next up, well, maybe not this one, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we've got Pilbara Minerals, another interesting stock that um, when the announcement I think came it out. actually looks good, though, Phil, like just the setup we're seeing now. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. You it know, could be a suckers rally. Be, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Rally, yeah. right, but. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and um, the reason for that is obviously, um, you know, we're obviously coming out of this downtrend. The news that came out of China, this was one of the stocks that also jumped on mm. with, with that, saw the, the speculation coming through. And um, we're left, if we just zoom in on this weekly chart, we're left with trying to answer that question. Speculation happened. 
but we were yet to see what the sellers wanted to offer. It was just the buying speculation. Now we're in a situation where we're seeing what the selling spec, uh, mm. what the sellers have to offer in response to this buying. And right now we're hovering about half of, of the fall, which is still quite promising, but it's still too early to tell. Buyers really do need to get into this stock right now to confirm that, hey, this is significant buying and this does want to go higher in the medium to long term. But um, again, coming out of these falls one month up, it's not enough. But it's beautiful that we're in a situation now that we get to find out the answers. Mm. So when he breaks above $3.20, $3.40, if we can go back and take out October's high, yeah, sure, might have turned the corner. All right, I think you've got one more stock, haven't you? Uh, look, that's it. We've no, got ALB. Um, that's the last one. Albert, what is it? Albert Mark, Albert Mark course? Look. <laughs> I can't even see the third Janine thing. needs glasses now. Uh, Alberma, Albemarle. See, that's that's Alba Marie. Alba Marie Corp. Alba Marie Third time lucky. All right, so looking at the trend, this is actually really orderly. I quite like this bottom here. It's come down and tested a low. I'm not going to bother to look at the monthly chart for now. Just stay with the weekly chart. But I think this has got the most promise. Probably out of all of them, uh, I like this one. And looking down through these highs here, you can see it's just beautiful, that angle of that trend. It's it's actually had that test of the low. It's come out over the trend line and then a nice little pullback is underway. So if it comes back, if it comes back and tests this, um, the angle of this this line here, um, then take off again. I think that'll be a nice little move. And just get a load of the price of this one. Good risk to all. I mean, too. it's it's actually 90 odd dollars. So that's quite incredible in itself because a lot of these stocks we've been dealing with are actually penny stocks where this is not in that category. So good to see one of these sort of stocks unfolding like that. And just looking at the sell-off, so you want to see a nice orderly sell-off lasting for a few months and then a rise that follows that's got a bit of a spring in its step there. So, you know, a rise above this recent high, and I think it's on its way. It's actually called Albemarle. That's the name. This could be one of the takeovers, potentially, you know. You just have a look at it. You never know. Mm. But a lot of investors would, and traders would not even look at this stock because of the stock price. Mm. They'd be going, oh, it's way too expensive. No, I'll go for a dollar stock. (laughs) From what I'm just saying, that's the best stock that you port, Mm. actually. So it's not about the actual price of the stock. It's the potential that it has. But anyway, thanks for that, team. Now stay with us as we'll be right back after this short break. This week on Talking Wealth, discover how crypto is reshaping banking with Emmanuel Daniel. What banks are doing right now is looking at what's happening in the crypto space and trying to absorb as much of this new technology and revamp their back end and make it more efficient. Unlock the power of independent thinking with Carol Sanford. Everybody can learn to think about something. If you're leading other people's thoughts, you're not developing their capacity to think for themselves. Dale and I discuss which Australian defence stocks are set to boom. Australia was going to be spending big on a whole bunch of new naval ships. Yes. And this is in that exactly in the right space to pick up all of that. Had a big move up, came right back down into, you know, 2016 and then she shot up. Get your free seven day trial now to watch this and more. Only on Talking Wealth. Well, that amazing content you just saw is going live this Thursday on Talking Wealth. Now, Dean wants to know whether it's time to get out of mineral resources. I purchased Min on the 30th of September 2024 at $50.96. I had an exit price of $43.36. However, I had not set this up in my broker platform. On Monday, it gapped 13.76% and took out my stop loss and I'm still in the position. Should I wait for it to recover or take a loss of 22.36%? Who do I go to on this one? That's mm. harsh, isn't I'll go it? to you, Janine, because you'll be softer. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> look, I actually feel for you. You know, this is a tough one. Um, you know, in this situation, what could you do? You had your stop in place. You were doing all the right things. That's all I can say. But this is just the market. Sometimes stocks will gap down. It's just the reality of it. But the fact that you're sitting there and you're saying, okay, what am I going to do now? It's gapped through my stop. Just get out is one option. Um, and that's probably the one that um, if you know, you were sticking to your rules um, precisely, then you would have moved to do that. If you're umming and ahhing, it may be because you've um, got some sort of fear happening there. 
Um, the psychology side is huge in the stock market, so that's one thing to be mindful of. So I would actually write some notes on this trade. It's so important to learn from this one so that in future if it happens again, and it probably will, it's just the reality of the stock market, isn't it? Well, it is, but sometimes when you get stuck in a stock like this mm. and it gaps down on you, it's because your buy, buy was wrong. Mm. Nothing else was wrong. So why she might have put your stop loss in and... Whether you put it in your broker platform or not is irrelevant to me. It's like, is what were your rules? What were the rules to get in? What are the rules to get out and follow the rules? So, mm. have we got where he bought on the chart? Yes. Did, yep. did yep. he buy in the right spot, or did he get to into a circus looks, rally? No, um, you know, to me, it looks like he he was chasing. He literally bought the week after the twenty seventh of September, which was that you know euphoric buying. So, mm. chasing the market a little bit, if you will. Look, I, I have to defend him because there is a rule there to buy. So. Um, I can actually see a rule that he could have bought on that rule. I don't know if he did or not, but if he did and he got caught, then there's nothing else he could do. We have to look at both sides of this. Yeah, but it's a confluence of things, isn't it? I'm not mm. saying we did or not because you've got the chart in front of mm. you, not me. Mm. So is there a confluence of rules that are strong enough to put a buy into there? And Phil and I looked at this stock last week or two couple of weeks ago and we went, nah, not yeah. hoping how mm. we'd be in this stock. Based on the China stimulus Mm. Well, it, well, yeah, it was just speculative move yeah. up. And so... Well, we always mm. say in the market, you know, um, when you, you've you always got to put in perspective the relationship between the buyers and the sellers. Now, if mm. we just go to the monthly chart, you look at mineral resources, regardless of what happened with the China stimulus, this stock since May 2024 has been in absolute free fall. Mm. So trying to pick up a stock that's falling for five, six months down heavily, probably the heaviest that it's fallen since the all-time high. It's not a wise move. It's not a wise move. You're trying to catch a, a falling knife, regardless of how strong one week is. Mm. One week doesn't make a trend. So to me, I'm going to have to say, no, it's not a good place to, to get your buy. The fact that you've gapped down on your stop, that is unfortunate. Yeah. But rules are rules. Get out, mate. I'm with Phil. Rules are rules are rules are rules, because if it does keep falling away from where it is, how are you going to feel in a week or two weeks' time if it's fallen a lot further? So, And you can always get back in if you do exit to protect your capital. So you need to make a good decision on your trading. So make traders' decision from now moving forward. Dion is next and would like our thoughts on NGI. It has come off a the $1 level with unfolding with higher peaks and troughs on the monthly chart. It has also broken the downtrend line. Current pattern is similar to the breakout above $1 back in 2014. However, there is resistance or a resistance level around $2.30. I'm considering an entry price if it breaks and holds above the $2.30. Strategies for the short to medium term trade. I'm going to go back to you, Jane. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's so well on that last stock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, now, if we have a look at the chart, we can see there's a fair bit of resistance from this high here. So the high is 232. So this is where you're talking about $2.30 buying above that level. I think in the case of this one, if we get this pullback three months down, it looks even. And if it goes charging through that high, I'd actually be um, quite comfortable with it if it closes strongly above that level and not necessarily too worried about this particular high just because we've had the strength in that pullback three months down and it hasn't come back anywhere near this low here so but it, it's all about how far it comes back if it continues to fall away closer to this low and then moves up I guess I would rely on this prior high here but you know it's sometimes you get some really nice little setups where a stock can run for one two three four five six months pull back for a few months and then run for four to six months on its high, on its way again Mm. Any thoughts, Phil? Um, I just like the fact that he's looking back through um, periods in the past, particularly this 2014 period, and seeing, you know, what did the stock do back at those levels? Because mm. you can really gauge, particularly when you go out big picture, where the real significant moments were where a stock got on with things. And that was where, you know, in the past mm. there was that value. So the fact that he's identified that, and I totally agree with everything Janine said in terms of, um, you know, it can get going from here. But I don't hate the idea of waiting for it to break above 230 and test the level on the other side because, mm. I mean, if this has got legs and we are seeing some kind of basing pattern, we can get going to 4 or $5 easy. Now, Dave's been back testing and has an interesting situation and he need, well, that he needs help with. And he writes, Hi, Dale, Phil and Janine. I'd like to know how to set a stop loss on a stock that has had a very strong upward trend that you can't get a trend line underneath and has no recent lows. This is something I've never experienced before, and I've been back testing a stock that has done this 
I'd like to know how you handle this so that if it happens, or so if and when it happens in real trading, I know how to manage the profit and exit at the right time. You want to take that one, Janine? I know you're good at this one. I'd say hold your breath. Like if it... <laughs> That's not a technical... If a stock's actually gone it's not, up... So... It's not a deep dive. <laughs> <laughs> if a stock's actually gone up so strongly and there's nothing underneath it, all you can do is wait for something to unfold on the chart and to find a trough or a, some sort of signal on the chart, a setup um, that'll give you an opportunity to set a stop loss. That's mm. as simple as it is. Well, how many mm. times have you ever seen a stock go vertical? Mm number one, and number two, how many times have you seen them go vertical and not give you a trough or not mm. give you something that you can use? One depends on the volatility of the stock, the liquidity of the stock. If the stock is a low liquidity how that share... How many times? That didn't answer that question. I can't give you an exact number. <laughs> Lots is the number. <laughs> um, look, you, you asked me for a number. Okay, 50. How's yeah, that? 50. Okay. So it happens <laughs> lots. But all I'm saying is how often do you see a stock go vertical mm. and it not give you a trough or something? Like I know I was trading a stock in my early days mm. and it was going vertical and vertical and vertical. Could not get a trend line on it for love or money. Then I finally got a trend line on it and it gave me the sell signal two weeks later. It mm. was like right on time. Mm. Look, I mean, I've, I've traded stocks that have actually dropped 20% from the peak mm. instead of and haven't given you a proper exit. At that yeah, point, but do they point. now normally then turn around and start moving up and get? Yeah, but it's not it's not normal for a stock to do that. Often no. you'll get um, an exit at the top if you've got really good sets of rules to follow and and have done your back testing. You'll be able to find a way to get out of a yeah, stock like that. And you could even go to different time frames. So if it depends what time frame you're trading at. So if it, if you're on the monthly chart, you may not get a signal there. You may want to go to the weekly chart maybe even down to the daily chart, see mm. if you can get an exit there. Mm. I mean, I think a lot of the question, in when I, I often read behind the question, and obviously in my reading behind his question, it's, well, what happens if it starts to fall? Mm. I'm losing profit. So how do I secure the most amount of profit? And at the end of the day, it's generally you will. So you'll be able to secure a profit because you will get a trough or will get a technical exit point. But as Pedro said, you know, you can go down to that smaller time frame. It's or, also too yeah. thinking that that could be one trade for that particular stock. So over mm. time, if you're trading that stock, it could be one out of 10 trades that does it. Mm. And then, you know, you have to just have confidence that at some point, like you say, you will get an exit. Well, you will. And it just depends on your level of trading mm. expertise. Because I know it was one day you were chatting to me. I said, I want to buy this stock, but we're only going to hold it for six weeks. Mm. You know, and it shot off like out of the blocks like mm. a racehorse. Uh, and then it gave you the sell signal six mm. weeks later and we got out of it. And I think, oh, I forget what we made. Alert, it was I think it was money. Illumina from memory. Yeah, it was something like AWC, that. But it was but like, I went, wow. Which know? got delisted. It was pretty annoying. It out, <laughs> just in time. It's an annoying thing, but you know, she makes a lot of money for our clients out of one stock and then it gets delisted. Isn't that great? Mm. Yeah. But it is. It's just one of those things. It just depends on your analysis, how you handle that. You know, I mean, obviously my book for investors, I talk about if a stock you know, falls 15%, from a high, then you could exit that. But that's not a technical signal that a trader would use. There's all sorts of different rules you can be using depending on your level of knowledge and skill and how you want to trade and the type of trading because I've had so many stocks that I've traded myself that have gone vertical like that and I've always got some sort of signal to exit them before it's too late. But anyway, um, any last words before I move on? Mm, I'd just I say think just, that was important. Yeah, mm. and I'd just say just draw a line in the sand. That's the most important uh, part, you know, uh, just making a decision, uh, not just leaving it for, you know, to, to do what it wants. So All right, well, I'm deciding to move on right now, and that is it for our take on the stocks that are in a blow-off pattern. My financial advisor has put Capstone Copper as a buy. I really like the way copper is headed, but looking at the chart, I'm wondering if it's going to have a pullback before another rise. I see resistance at $11.58. I'm going to go to you, Janine, on this one. I knew you would, and, I'm, and I wasn't ready. That was perfect timing, wasn't it? I was watching out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> I think he's going to go to I'm going to get up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just having a play here. Now, you can see on the screen there, Capstone Copper I've recently made a high. Um, it's broken through this point, which is interesting. So it's looking at resistance around 11.58. I agree. Um, so well done. It is important, that level, um, sort of around that level. I wouldn't be so precise to say 11.58, I mean, you could say 11, 11.76, whatever, um, you, you know, excites you there. But looking at the way that it's unfolding now, we've got a couple of weeks down. So we just need to find, see it find a bit of support. I mean, it's not to say, Phil, it might actually come down 
uh, further. We could see a bit of a drop down. The worst case scenario would be if it came back to you know another 10%. At the moment, I'm not seeing that, but we just have to wait and see. A rise above this week's high, so if it, if from now on, um, following this week, if we get a rise above 11.48, then it could break out above this high, but it's just a waiting game right now. Well, the interesting part of that email was, you know, waiting for a pullback. Mm. To me, the stock already looks like it's pulling back at the moment. And, you know, in terms of getting that right entry, it's one thing for a stock to pull back, but the safer uh, idea or, or move is waiting for that confirmation and getting the stock back on on the turn up to s- confirm that there's mm. buyers picking it up off those lows. So, um, well, I'll... I think I think that's what's the point because I mean, waiting for the pullback, I'd say big tick. You know, mm. in in actually choosing to do that because that's obviously show, showing weakness, and you want strength to be behind you. You want the the buying to be behind you, pushing the stock up before you commit. So I I agree. I wait. I'd wait until it got above that resistance. You know what? I like that that she didn't blindly just go yes with the financial advisor and <laughs> go to buy into it. Because how many stories do we get? My financial advisor bought me into these stocks, and now look at them. Mm. You know, and I think that's really big tick mm. for me to say yes. You checking on what your financial advisor, he may not be wrong, I'm just saying I think it's fantastic that you're actually checking on it and doing the right thing for you, so well done for that. Well, next is Christina asking about the future prospect of Origin Energy. She goes to say, I don't hold any shares at the moment, planning to purchase at the nearest entry point, then hold for about one year. I think the clean energy industry is on the rise, but not sure how this company will perform during this time frame. Now, I'm going to go to you, Phil, because you're ready. All right, so <laughs> let's go to the chart there for you, Christina. But I mean, it's a long-term outlook, which is quite interesting, mm. one-year outlook. I wonder why, um, you know, I always find it interesting when people put a specific time frame on that outlook. It's, when, when I see outlooks being put, generally it's, you know, if you're putting one relative to price, if I think it's gonna get to a certain level, but time um, itself, that one year, I'd love to know. But anyway, we don't have more of that email to uh, dissect, but let's go back to the chart and, and have a look at what Origin is doing. And I mean, look, right now it is, in a very nice uptrend. The stock recently cleared a significant level, which was this particular high back in May 2018. And right now the move, as it's rolling through trend, it doesn't look like anything unsustainable or euphoric, if you will. Like if we just stick to the monthly chart, you can see near the signs near the end were what happened during this period in April 2008, where you saw this huge expansion with no real, Mm. I guess, stability. Um, We are not seeing any of that just yet. And similar goes on the way down. We saw this big blow off, which then saw a reversal. And again, back in January 2020, right now we're quite nicely in trend. I think it's about the strategy one year, regardless of the time frame, I would say Mm. you need to manage this position because while it's in trend, the further it goes up, the the further you get to an end at some point. Mm -hmm. So I would say as long as you've got your your capital protection, managing the trade as it's going, it's in trend, you know, don't fight the long-term trend. I think it's a good uh, Well, that's what I would say, to stay with it. Like Mm. I know quite often when you get somebody, and Janine and I have had this numerous times where somebody says, I'm going to do this for six months or 12 months. And then when you start asking them, Mm. And you find out, oh, I'm going to buy a house in six months or mm. I've got a, I'm going overseas and I've got its funding with that. And, and you're thinking, well, how important is what you need to do with the money? And is it important enough that you put your money at risk to not have all of it when you do buy the house and whatever else? And I know we've had that conversation how many mm. times? Loads. Loads with people. So, again, I wouldn't put a time frame on it. I would just hold while it's going up and We do like a out. stock choice, though. It's, yeah, it's really a good, good stock choice. Big tick there, Christina, mm. on the stock choice. And also, mm. it's a bonus that it's actually pulling back right now. So your timing, in my view, is actually perfect. It's very good. Yeah, mm. waiting for this pullback. Let it test that level. Let the higher risk money take it. And then at the moment, it might even come back a bit mm. further and you'll get a better opportunity. Remember to show your support for our channel and smash that like button. Now, if you enjoy watching and want to see loads more of our content, click subscribe now. Subscribing helps others find our channel so we can help them too. Now, before we let you go, what was your favourite part of the show? Was it our hot stock tip, our topic for the night, or was it a viewer question? Let us know by commenting below this video. Thanks to all of those who are watching on YouTube and Facebook. If you are watching on TalkingWealth.com, stay tuned for more exciting stock picks, insights, and strategies. We'll be right back with all of that and more. Next week in our main topic, we get into unpacking the three most common trading strategies. Do they really work? Make sure you join us next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. 
Now, if you love our show, remember to hit that like button right now and subscribe to our channel as this shows your support for the team that puts in the effort each week into bringing it to you. If you are subscribed, then you'll always know when we go live and put up new content. As always, thank you for joining us for now. Goodbye, good luck, and good trading.